Hi everybody, Scott Haney here in Brantford, Connecticut, and I am at Connecticut Hospice, where they are having a fundraiser called Lights of Love. This is a way that you can give back to the community, give back to a wonderful organization, and for more on this, I met up with Barbara Pierce, who we're gonna meet inside, come on. Tell me about Connecticut Hospice, first of all. This is such a beautiful facility. What, what goes on here? It's a spectacular facility, and you'd think even more highly of it is if you knew what went on every day and get to live it as we do. Um, we provide the best in end-of-life care for people, both residentially at this wonderful waterfront facility and in homes and nursing homes around the state. And there are uh, 41 hospices in the state of Connecticut. What differentiates you from the, from the rest of them? We're the first. You're we the were first. the first hospice in America. We were founded by the dean of the Yale School of Nursing who went to London to study St. Christopher's. That's why our web, our web address is hospice.com because we are the mothership of hospices. And, and again, hospice is end of life care. And so you're allowing visitors here even during COVID. Even during COVID, we're allowing visitors. We're one of the only places allowed to do that. Um, many places do have exemptions for end of life visitors, but everybody here is somewhere near the end of life. And so we've done everything we can to prevent banning visitors because we know it is so important for people to be able to see their loved ones at the end of life. So it's one of the things we're proudest of that we've been able to do and something that distinguishes us from most hospitals who can't do it. And there's fundraising going on for the Connecticut Hospice right now, in particular right now. Yes, we've had some wonderful fundraisers over the years, Scott, but obviously this year we can't do anything in person. So we heard about an idea that was done somewhere else and we've adapted it for us. It's called lights of love and for the month of December we're lighting up our grounds with many many trees strung with lights and the trees are being sponsored by people the strings of lights are being sponsored by people in memory of people that they've loved and lost um, we also have a number of trees that you can see around our lobby that were um, artificial trees that have been decorated and donated by groups of people or individuals and we're auctioning them in a silent auction on our website which goes through December 13th and then will be available for pickup the following week if you don't have your Christmas tree yet Scott you can still bid on a tree here okay and if I want to get a string of lights how do I do that you go on www.hospice.com and look under lights of love it's on our homepage, and you can purchase a string of lights and give the name of the person for whom it's in memory okay and it's it's that simple it's that simple. It's $25 for a string of lights, $250 for a tree. The silent auction is whatever it brings. And you can go to the site and just make a monetary donation? You can. You can make a monetary donation without doing it in anyone's name. In fact, this is the time of year we traditionally do our annual fundraising drive. We are a not-for-profit. Um, and as a large hospice, we depend on contributions to be able to provide services over and above what's provided by Medicare. Okay. Make One sure. thing I wanted to get across is, first of all, I wanted you to see the beautiful setting. And I know it's not a perfect day and it's kind of cold out there, but it is a beautiful setting and people go outside. We do actually allow more visitors outside. We live five at a time and people take their relatives out. All our beds roll outside. We have blankets if it's cold. Um, and we also have places where people have family gatherings socially distanced to do weddings, anniversaries, um, birthday parties, that kind of thing. But we're really, really pleased to be able to allow visitors during this time, especially at the holidays, especially for people at the end of life. We would not have been able to do have done this without our partners in the community. So Rotary put up all the trees for us and, and got them and delivered them and has been helping us with this fundraiser, the Brantford Rotary through its own um, network and through the uh, efforts of volunteers from the Brantford Rotary. Mm -hmm. So we partner with a lot of people in the community and we're always happy to do that. And we're very grateful to them for allowing us to do this socially distanced bit of Christmas cheer and holiday cheer. We do also have a menorah which is sponsored, um, but people can drive through here at night and they can see the lit up trees and they don't need to get out of their cars. It's also wonderful for our patients uh, visitors and staff to be able to enjoy a little bit of the holiday season.